Okay, so um, my name is Eric Wall. I'm a board member of the StarkNet Foundation, but uh, I'm going to talk about uh, some of the crazy nonsense that I do on the on the side of that. So um, I don't know how many people here in the audience are consider themselves to be uh, Bitcoiners. Okay, there's a few. Uh, in some cases here, uh, you know, at Starkware, there are a lot of people that at least started as Bitcoiners. Let's see. Can I? Okay. So, um, I want to talk about something that happened five days ago. And so, five days ago in the Bitcoin blockchain, the biggest block in the history of Bitcoin uh, was mined. So this block was four megabytes large. The previous largest block before that was in 2015, and it was 2.8 megabytes uh, large. So the record has been broken. I'm going to talk a little bit about why that is. So I don't, I don't know if you remember back in 2021 when there was a lot of Bitcoin maximalists that were uh, cheering about how Taproot was going to uh, create DeFi on Bitcoin and blow our minds with all the amazing functionality that Taproot was, was, was going to uh, bring to, to Bitcoin. Uh, in reality, the, the Taproot it has uh, like this thing called Merkleized Abstract Syntax Trees, but it's more like... It can't really do like a for loop, but more like switch statements, so it's still kind of primitive. Um, and thus far, the adoption for Taproot hasn't been great. So there are some interesting things that you could do with Taproot. Uh, you could do Schnorr signatures and multi-signatures and make a multi-signature look like a single signature, which would improve privacy. But because the tooling hasn't really been rolled out yet, and there are so few people using it, um, Actually, if you use Taproot, you are more you have you have worse privacy because it's easier to track you on the chain because you're the only one that's sort of using Taproot. Um, so, and this is the, the reason that me and Udi Wertheimer, who was supposed to be here also at this conference, but he didn't come because he's a bit of a dick and that's what he wants. Um, and so this is the only upgrade we had in Bitcoin in, in five years. So this is why we like to make fun of, of, of Taproot as much as we can. Uh, but it wasn't until December last year, so just recently now, that someone actually figured out something that we can do with, um, with, with, with Taproot that um, doesn't require tons of exchange and wallet integration. So something that we can start using right away. And this is something that is called the Ordinals system that was invented by a developer called Casey Rottermore, uh, where he um, basically found out a way to store arbitrary amounts of data on the Bitcoin blockchain. Now, this, hasn't been, this is not something that has been uh, impossible before. We've had things like op return where you could store 80 bytes, but um, I'm going to explain how this script uh, works so so Bitcoin is Bitcoin script Bitcoin has a scripting language by the way it's called Bitcoin script and it's a um, stack based fourth like type of uh, type of programming language where you sort of push elements to a stack uh, but it's very low level um, and there are limitations so if you've ever worked on Bitcoin the one thing that you know about Bitcoin is that it has a lot of a lot of limitations so these are some of the limitations for uh, Taproot. Uh, scripts and the ones that I want you to focus on are really these two uh, uh, lower parts here. The uh, uh, thousand elements that you can push onto the stack and each stack elements can be a maximum of 520 bytes, which means that one transaction uh, can reach a maximum of uh, um, 520 uh, kilobytes. Like that, that's the max size of a transaction, theoretically. But uh, the nice thing about this script, kind of, I'm going to walk you through it, and uh, I just want to say I'm not a programmer, so if I say something stupid, uh, it's because you know, I'm, not, I'm not a programmer. I know that there are some people that think that, there are some non-programmer people that think that I look like a programmer, but I'm, I'm not. A, I actually get insulted when people say that. I'm not a programmer. Um, so if you look here, this... Uh, script here actually starts with op false. 
So that means that uh, this if statement that comes afterwards, while it's there, like data-wise, the data exists inside the transaction, where ne the script is never going to enter the if statement, and those op pushes are never gonna get pushed to the stack. So these stack limitations that we had, like these, the, the, the thousand element uh, stack limit and the, uh, like, those limitations are never going to be hit because we're not actually pushing anything to the stack. We just have an OP false, so none of that matters, which means that what we've basically invented here, what, what Casey has invented here, is something that to an Ethereum would sound pretty much like call data. You know, the stuff that Starknet uses as its data availability layer on, on, on Ethereum. Actually, I, I would say that we can go a little bit further than that and call it blob space. Because another thing about Bitcoin is that uh, script data, actually every four uh, bytes of script data counts as one byte. So it's 75% cheaper to, uh, to store bytes in, in scripts in Bitcoin. So there, there's actually a discount. So it's sort of similar to, to, to blob space, the thing that we're trying to do with EIP 4844. Um, so we don't have KG, K, KGZ, KZG commitments. We don't have data availability sampling. We don't have fraud proofs. We don't have validity proofs. We don't have basically anything, but we do have blob space. So that's something that we're very proud about of being first of having <laughs> in Bitcoin. Uh, so, um, Right now in Bitcoin, there's like not a ton of things that you can do. So this, is, this, this, this here shows the fee market of, of Bitcoin. And the thing that you should focus on here are not, is not the, uh, the, 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 like how high these mountains are. It's really the colors that define how expensive uh, transactions are. So yellow, the yellow color is 20 times more expensive than the blue, and we really haven't had uh, yellow in, in quite a, uh, a long time. So uh, the reason for this is that like you can't do that much with Bitcoin. There's no, there's not a lot of MEV. There's no on-chain decentralized exchanges. There's no li on-chain liquidations. There's no auctions. There's no arbitrage. So, and people don't even use like when we had in 2018 here, the reason why um, we had so, uh, so, so much pressure on the mempool in Bitcoin was because people were actually using Bitcoin to transfer value between exchanges. And when they were stressed around like moving their Bitcoin around exchanges, then the mempool got, got flooded. But now people use stable coins to transfer value around exchanges. So there's really not a lot of activity uh, on the Bitcoin back, uh, blockchain. So the data, the data, the, the blob space that we just talked about is now actually hilariously cheap. It's hilariously cheap. I'm going to talk about how cheap that is. So um, this is a, 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 a Donald Trump NFT that I have. Uh, don't ask me why. Actually, do ask me why, because it's a funny story, but do it off stage because uh, yeah, I, just, I don't want to take, it, take up your time with it here. But I did some calculations. So this, this NFT is, um, I think it's 360 kilobytes large. And to store that on Bitcoin, to actually store it on the chain, only cost me $20. So I did this. Uh, it's the, the 134th inscription using the ordinal NFT system on Bitcoin that was just invented. And I did some comparison to how much that would cost on uh, Ethereum. And uh, so this calculation I did one week ago, so it might be a little bit off. But really, it's seven times cheaper to store data on Bitcoin now. Um, so, and, and, and I'm actually talking now about storing the full JPEG. So if you look at the block explorer on that transaction where that JPEG was inscribed, this is 1% of, of that transaction. So there's a lot of data that, that we just pushed into the Bitcoin blockchain. Um, and another thing that's sort of interesting with the Bitcoin uh, uh, block space is that like we don't really have on our roadmaps anything that's called like auto pruning or a history expiry. The, there's never been on the roadmap of Bitcoin of throwing away previous data. So this type of block space is more pure and pristine in some way. And I don't know if there's some people that, I don't know what you guys think of proof of work. I think that there are merits to both proof of stake and proof of work. So this is a type of uh, block space, you know, that has proof of work behind it. So it's a little bit different than the one that we have on Ethereum. And there are some people I know that appreciates 
the nuances and the variances to, to that type of block space. Um, so, but when I see a, a, something like this, like there is a, a block, a, a blob space here that is uh, cheap to use, I kind of want to start to mess around with that a little bit because, I mean, if there's a problem that it's so cheap that to, to store data on there, then maybe that's something that we should fix. Or maybe it's not a problem, but at least I want to have that, I want to accelerate us having that conversation as soon as possible so that when we don't find out later that we have to fix it, then it's better to get it out of the way, right? So we reached out, or actually I, I, should, I should say that uh, Uri uh, reached out to Luxor Mining Pool and convinced them to let us mine the single uh, biggest uh, tr Bitcoin transaction in history. And the transaction was so large that it took up the entire blocks. So we filled an entire Bitcoin block with one transaction, mm -hmm. and it was this stupid JPEG file that <laughs> you see here on the right-hand side. And you can go to this uh, website here, and you'll join a Discord, and there's a, sort of a community that's uh, starting to emerge. There was, already has 5,000 members, even though that this was just for five days ago. Um, so, and this was like two, two of the most stressful days of my life, trying to get this block into the Bitcoin blockchain, because you, there's a bunch of standardness rules, so you can't just throw this transaction into the mempool and hope that it gets mined. You actually have to disable uh, policy rules and standardness rules in the, in, in the Luxor mining uh, node itself to even get it, the transaction into the transaction. So we're fucking around with settings and if, there's, if we malformat the block, then that's $150,000 that gets burnt and that's gonna be our fault. So it was very stressful. Even till the very end, we were like trying to uh, fix things and make sure that we, we weren't mal malformatting the block. Um, so there were some kind of mixed reactions to this. The uh, Luke Dash Jr., who um, is one of the core developers of Bitcoin, uh, to be fair, fair, he always has some pretty like crazy takes about things in, in Bitcoin. But uh, so he said, so there was someone who asked him, "But isn't this a valid Bitcoin transaction, though?" And he said, "No, because you, you were lying and, and tricking the code." Uh, when we're doing this, but it, it turns out that people actually like to lie and trick the code. That's something that people get off on and they do it a lot. So very quickly after we had the first inscription in uh, the 15th of December, um, uh, only like three days ago, we were already at 2,000 inscriptions. And I heard yesterday we were at 5,000 inscriptions. And I think today we are probably at 10,000 inscriptions. So people are just flooding to this Bitcoin, new Bitcoin NFT market. And so the, the, on, on the bright side though, um, we had, so now we actually have uh, adoption for Taproot. <laughs> maybe not, maybe not, it's not the, uh, Taproot blew our mind, but maybe not exactly in the kind of way that we wanted it to blow our minds. Uh, but so there's, I wanna talk about what we can do with this box space, like something that we can do perhaps more seriously. I actually think that NFTs are not super unserious because there's, we can generate fees from that. And I can very much imagine that if you make a full block ad, there would be advertisers that would be willing to pay maybe $20,000 for that instead of the $2,000 per block that they've been making from transaction fees now. So maybe we're actually saving Bitcoin's security budget with, the, with JPEGs, which is also kind of funny. Um, but I want to tell, let's see if I actually have time. I'm really running out of, out of time. but. Um, I wanted to talk about, so um, the reason that I got into Bitcoin, why I'm at the StarkNet Foundation right now, and it's because of some of the promises that were, that were made when I joined the Bitcoin space. So this was the banner, profile, the, the banner picture of my LinkedIn page, that we were going to build side chains on Bitcoin. Um, and we were talking about, so we were supposed to build the centralized side chains to Bitcoin. And this, is, uh, this quote here is from the, the 2014 Sidechains white paper from Blockstream, where we talked about, uh, the, there was enthusiasm about building decentralized exchanges and all those things that we see on Ethereum right now. But in the end, you, they didn't deliver any decentralized sidechain at all. You know, the, the only sidechain that Blockstream ever built was this liquid sidechain, which, which is more like just a multi-sig wallet than it even is a sidechain, really. 
And Greg Maxwell, who was one of my heroes at the time, so this, this was seven years ago, he talked about the ability of using snarks as a way to verify the computations of side chains. So these were ideas that were already out there out, uh, back then that we never capitalized on, which is so sad. Um, and I also feel kind of rugged because 2015, Blockstream said that they were going to release a decentralized sidechain. And in 2017, the debate had sort of uh, moved around a little bit, and we were talking about drive chains, which, which is a variant of sidechains. Um, and it was re generally appreciated as, as a good idea. But then the block size wars happened, and we got afraid of miners, and then all of a sudden, drive chains were too scary, so we never built any drive chains at all either. Uh, so we, by the way, I did some work with the Human Rights Foundation uh, using a grant from Starkware and CMS Holdings to elect a candidate to study what it would take to build like a real ZK rollup on Bitcoin. Um, so the study, that's, you, can, you can visit this website, the study results so far show that we can increase the throughput of Bitcoin with 35x using ZK rollups on Bitcoin. However, it's going to take a bunch of soft forks that I, I don't really think we're going to get them into Bitcoin considering how long it takes and how ossified the protocol is. But the one idea I want to leave you with is how about we use this very cheap proof of work based block space and we build perhaps a sovereign rollup. I don't know if you guys know what a sovereign rollup is, but it's, it's a layer two that basically just uses the layer one as the uh, mechanism for ordering blocks to create the order of transactions and guarantee the, the data availability. Uh, so we don't have, uh, we wouldn't have fraud proofs on the layer one or validity proofs. All that would happen in the layer two. So what you would have, you, you would basically have a layer two where you still have validity proofs, you still have fraud proofs, but that exists on the layer two. Uh, and then you just get the, uh, the, the consensus and the ordering from the layer one. So that's something that we could actually start building now. That's possible. Uh, and it's cheap. Currently, we'll, we'll see if these JPEGs that we are uh, putting on the blockchain are, are going to make it expensive again. So maybe this is, will be a bad idea in a couple of months from now. But this is the, if you are like a PhD student or some kind of hacker and you want to do something fun, start thinking about maybe a building, if you are interested in building a proof of work backed sovereign uh, roll up, then actually the opportunity is there right now. And that's the, sort of the idea that I want to leave you guys with. Uh, I think I'm way over time. Uh, thank you so much.